I'm Rachel Mixon, minister at Zion Spring Baptist Church. As we navigate these difficult times of social distancing, it's by God's grace that we continue to stay connected and gather together. Please feel free to visit our website at www.zionsbconline.com and join us in Bible study on Wednesday nights at 6.30 p.m., Sunday school at 8.45 a.m., and then stay with us in worship at 10 a.m. on social media via YouTube, Facebook, or Zoom. You can leave your prayer requests, continue to give tithes and offerings, or if you feel led to donate, you can do so at our website, www.zionsbconline.com. Thank you, stay safe, and God bless.
morning, Zion Spring. It's time for our call to worship, which is found in Psalm 138. I give you thanks, O Lord, with my whole heart. Before the gods I sing your praise, I bow down towards your holy temple. Praise your name for your loving kindness and for your truth. For you have exalted above all things your name and your word. And on the day I called, you answered me. And my strength of soul you increased. All the kings of the earth shall give you thanks, O Lord, for they have heard the words of your mouth, and they shall sing of the ways of the Lord, for great is the glory of the Lord. For though the Lord is high, he regards the lowly, but the haughty he knows from afar. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you preserve my life. You stretch out your hand against the wrath of my enemies, and your right hand delivers me. Verse number 8 of Psalm 138 says, The Lord will fulfill his purpose for me. In steadfast love, O Lord, endures forever. Do not forsake the work of your hands. In the Queen's English, it says, The Lord will perfect that which concerns me. That mercy, O Lord, endures forever. Forsake not the work of thine own hands. Will you pray with me now? Thank you, Lord, for another day. Thank you for keeping us from last week to this week, preserving us, protecting, providing for us, Lord, and being patient with us. Lord, we say thank you. Now, God, be in the midst of this service. I know we're just gathered together here in this virtual sanctuary. But God, make your presence known. Make your spirit strong in us so that even as we might be socially distant, physically distant from one another, we might remain spiritually connected. God, we need you. And we draw near to you right now with our hands and our hearts wide open. We love you. We bless you. We magnify you. We are grateful for all that you've done. And we pray that you will draw near to us even as we draw near to you. Hear our prayers. Receive our praise. Accept our offerings to you this morning that they may be pleasing in your sight. In Jesus' name, amen. Just a quick reminder that we do continue to gather virtually online during the week. We have small groups on Sunday mornings at 8.45 a.m., Wednesday night Bible study at 6.30, and weekly prayer service on Thursdays at 11 a.m. To access these links, visit our website, www.zionsbconline.com and click the live stream link to join us on Zoom, Facebook Live, or YouTube. If you would like to donate to leave your offerings, you can continue to do so through our website, zionsbconline.com, and any gifts you leave will be greatly appreciated. All of your transactions are secure and immediate. Say, Lord, you're mighty. 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 Say, Lord, you're mighty. 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 Mighty in battle. Lord, you're mighty. Mighty in battle. Lord, you're mighty. 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 Lord, you're mighty.
My lesson text for this morning is taken from Genesis chapter 1 and verse number 27. where We find the familiar words, So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him, male and female, he created them. Will you pray with me? Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight. You are my strength and my redeemer. Amen. We're about to start off on a new series of lessons on restoration, what it means to be restored. And for a few minutes this morning, I want you to consider with me the topic, a perfect pattern. A perfect pattern. When we read Genesis chapter 1 and 2, God's wisdom and his love are on full display. Built into this introduction to the grand narrative of scripture, we're introduced to a sovereign God who creates out of nothingness and chaos. We're introduced to a sovereign God who establishes order and distinction as well as unity and balance. We encounter a God who desires relationship with his creation and through compassion sustains his creation. God created a vast and a beautiful world, a a world full of beauty, light, and life. And then God created humanity. So God created man in his own image, in the likeness, in, in his own image, in the image of God. He created him, male and female. He created them. Now, in many of your Bibles, you see Genesis 1 and 27 the words God created man in his own image. The language can, can be a little confusing in the sense that we live in a world that is um, fraught with uh, power struggles, oppression, and violence. And when some folks see the word man in, in the A portion, they think it literally means man. But if we can keep reading, we'll find that the word man in the A portion is actually qualified in the B portion. So God created man in his own image. In the likeness of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. So the man in A is qualified in the B portion. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. So while some may pour over the scriptures looking for ways to uphold their oppressive systems based on gender or cultural norms, I believe this verse alone overturns all of that reasoning. When God created humanity in his own image, he created male and female. So whether we are male or female, man or woman, we can be assured that we are all created. In the image and likeness of God, regardless of what our society says or whatever the cultural norms may that may be imposed or gender roles that we might assume willingly. When God created humanity, he created male and female. He created us in the in his own image. So when we think of who God is, aside from the fact that he is utterly in a class by himself, God is holy and beyond our definitions and categories. We can't limit him to his maleness or his femaleness. We must also realize that God is both divine feminine and divine masculine, male and female. He created them. So God created man in his own image, the image of God. He created him male and female. He created them. Now, I think my ancestors understood this experientially, even if they didn't know it academically or intellectually. And how many of our songs and how many of our refrains, how many times have we heard when a preacher closes a sermon, he says he's a mother to the motherless. He's a father to the fatherless. So our wise and our compassionate, our loving, and our holy God created humanity in God's own image. Male and female, he created them using himself as the perfect pattern. When God created humanity, God used God's self as the pattern. Why is that significant? What does that mean? The truth that God created humanity in God's own image, male and female, God created them, illuminates several things that I think we can all find deeply encouraging. 
The first thing we learn from the creation accounts, and particularly Genesis 1 and 27, is that God is creative, God is wise, God is compassionate, and God is holy. God created humanity with intellect, with a tendency toward community. And God created humanity for a particular purpose. That is, he set us aside for a particular work. Which means that as God is creative, we are creative. As God is wise, he has given us our intellect. He's given us the community. We're communal beings. And yes, God created us to be holy. The second thing I think we can receive encouragement from is kind of a derivative of the first thing, but I want to focus on it. God is relational. When we read the words that God made us in his image and likeness, that, that holds with this, this idea that God makes us so that we might know him. And the, that we might live in fellowship, live in a relationship with him. God is relational. God has a reason for making us like him. God craves, God desires a relationship with his creation in the same way that we crave a relationship with one another. And the basis of that relationship, rightly ordered, is love. So God is creative, wise, compassionate, holy. God is relational. God is also intentional. God creates for a purpose. God's supreme purpose is is that we, as we are in God's image, might know him. God made us for relationship with him. And whether we talk, call that relationship fellowship with God, communion with God, or we call it worship, God created us to be in relationship with him. But beyond that, God created us so that we might bear the divine image in a world that does not know him. God created us so that we might reflect the divine image in the world that he created. So God created us for relationship. God created us to reflect his image in the world that he created. But not only that, God created us to rule. That is to steward because we are not the owners we are the stewards. God created us to steward his creation with the same love and compassion with which he created it. And then finally, God, as he is creative, he created us so that we might reproduce. God creates, we are creative. God makes and we reproduce. So in a word then, if you know all these things about who God is, God is Creative, wise, compassionate, and holy. God is relational. God is intentional. What bearing does that have on our lives? What does it mean? And God made man in his own image. In his own image, God created them. Male and female, he created them. What does this mean? This means that regardless of who birthed you, this means regardless of the circumstances under which you were born, this means that regardless of the family that you were born into, regardless of your gender, your ethnicity, your social location, your geography, your economic background, it, regardless of all of these things, you, my sisters and brothers, were created in the image and likeness of a wise, creative, loving, compassionate God, a holy God. You were created in God's image. Regardless of the rumor of your inferiority, regardless of those lies that were imposed upon you by oppressive systems and, and forces, regardless even of the cruelty or abuse you might have endured by careless people in your own household, and regardless of the negative thoughts that you might have of yourselves, remember that God created you out of his own love. God created you to be loved. And God created you to love others. Regardless of where you come from. No matter what baggage you might bear. No matter what scars might remain on your mind or on your body even. Don't ever forget that God made you in his image and in his likeness. The psalm writer said, you formed me in my inward parts. You knitted me together in my mother's womb. I praise you 
For I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works, O God, and my soul knows it well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was being made in secret, intricately woven together in the depths of earth. You saw my, your eyes saw my unformed substance. In your book were written every one of them. The days of my life were formed for me when there was none of them. In a word, when God created us, God used God's self as the pattern. And when God created us with all our oddities, with all our idiosyncrasies, with all our uniqueness and all of our diversity, God, when he created us, he deployed a perfect pattern. God used God's own being as the blueprint for our identity as his highest creation. And brothers and sisters, this is the truth about who we are and it is the only truth that matters now why God created us in his image and in his likeness he created us for relationship with him he created us to reflect him in the world that he created he created us to rule in his stead to steward over compassionately his his own creation What's not in this scripture is the fact that God created us to be perfect. God declared good and very good. But God did not say he made us perfect. At least not in the way that we count perfection in our society. Now, in a spiritual sense, in a biblical sense, we are complete when we bear the divine image. But we are not perfect. And thank God we don't need to be perfect. In order to be loved. We don't need to be perfect in order to be blessed. We don't need to be perfect in order to be beautiful. We don't need to be perfect in order to be used by God. We don't need to be perfect in order to be counted as precious in the sight of God. The psalm writer said, how precious to me are your thoughts, O God. How vast is the sum of them. We are made in the image and likeness of God, but we're not perfect. And that's all right. So while we're just entering into this story about restoration, just at the beginning of this grand narrative, the unfolding of God's good news for his people, and while there will be twists and turns in this story, in the fullness of time, God will remind us of this truth. When he became as one of us. He affirmed our humanity. When he came as one of us. He redeemed us. And yes he restored us. So that he could remind us. Of who we really are. But that's another story for another day. For the time being I want you to. To be reminded of what God says about who you are and about who we are. God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him male and female. He created them. I want you to know it. I want you to write it on the table of your hearts. I want you to repeat it to yourself often, especially when you're feeling low and like you're less than enough. Just say it on the inside, whisper it while you're at work or when you're traveling or when you get some bad news. When God created me, when God created us, he used a perfect pattern. Amen.
you for choosing to be with us on this Sunday morning. We know you could be anywhere. We're so glad that you chose to stop by here. We hope that you have been blessed and encouraged by the music and by the message. And we hope that you don't leave the same way that you came. Amen. Now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, the sweet communion of His Holy Spirit, rest, rule, abide with us, and keep us in peace until we meet again. Amen. If you're interested in learning more about the Zion Spring Baptist Church family, please visit our website at www.zionsbconline.com. We'd love to hear from you, and we'd love even more to share with you on this journey toward becoming what God created you to be. We love you, and God bless you. Thank you for worshiping with Zion Spring Baptist Church, where you are welcome.